Hello, everybody, and Hi. welcome back to the judgiest place on the internet. My name is Josh. My name is Rick. And my name is Christian. And we are the, the Judges. Back in New Year than ever. Woo! Huzzah! Ooh, I hope that got caught. That was a good pop. We got to do have some champagne. You know, non-alcoholic. Because it's, it's New Year's. No, it is absolutely alcoholic. No, for YouTube, it's not alcoholic But it is. It's non-alcoholic. The it's bubbles not. aren't alcohol. A bit of the bubbly... The bubbles aren't alcoholic. What's the deal with uh, champagne on New Year's? Like, where did that start? Um. France. <laughs> like, is champagne supposed to be fancy? I think I it's f- a more expensive beverage, so it's like for just special occasions or I something. I do enjoy the cristal that you've brought. It's from your cabinet. Ah. <laughs> Great. Good taste, Josh. Wow, Nora. you guys have wonderful tasting glassware, is what I'm saying. Not Wait, flutes, are. but uh, yeah. Well, you only had two champagne flutes, mm. and I wanted us all to match, sure. and these all matched. That so. makes sense. Cheers. Do you have to drink all of this? No. I mean, if you're not going to, I will. Cheers to the New Year's. New Year's. How about we have a few beers from us to you, and oh, you're already drinking. I was giving oh. a whole thing. To honor. If you can't come in here, come on her. <laughs> All right, folks. New Year's. Oh, no. We have to go get mail. Oh, fuck. Do you want me to do it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. You offered. I know. You know what's cool? This episode is going to come out at New Year's. New Year's Eve. Yeah, New Year's Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to. When everybody's. When the ball's dropping, the pod's Whoa! dropping. Oh. Only in our time zone. Well, and only. I mean, on the West Coast, it would be, I guess. West too. Coast? Wait. Now I'm confused. How do time zones work? We release it at 2 a.m. our time. You release it that way. It's mid- midnight, new- midnight on West Coast. West Coast on Monday. Because that's the people that do our ads. It's yeah. easier for them to do their track. None of this is interesting, and it's all cut. And we're back with mail. That's right. People send us mail over at PO Box 58, Ottawa, Illinois 61350. And this Did is you leave a the package all the way over there. Oh, it's right here. A wedding invite. From Kobe and Carly. Kobe? Yeah. There like is a note. Kobe Jack? No, Kobe. spelled differently. <clears throat> hey, judges. Hello. You can use our names, and I go by August on the Discord. I've been listening for about a year, and I've listened to every episode, including bonus, at least twice. I love all of you equally and genuinely don't see how anyone could pick a favorite. But thank you, Mom. Correct answer. <laughs> All I know is y'all are amazing individuals that make an amazing group of people. I'm glad y'all were the first non-informational and non-religious podcast I ever listened to. Oh. My fiance doesn't listen to podcasts, but I've put y'all on during road trips and he hasn't hated it. (laughs) Now for my confession. Oh. I have ripped bits from y'all. Erica's incorrect from the first season of Josh's... From the first season, and Josh's, what did, what did you say? What did I say? That's a Christian bit. That is a Christian bit. And my fiance Classic has ripped them for me not knowing where they come from. So I'm hoping this will serve two purposes. Tell him I'm a bit of thief, a bit thief, and not as creative and funny as he thinks, and get him to listen since y'all said his name. Seriously grateful for all of y'all, and can't wait to listen to all the goofing to come, Carly. Something. I'm not going to say their last name. P.S. My last name is pronounced... Oh. I'm still not going to say it. I don't want to dox you fully. <laughs> Thank you very much. And it's a beautiful little wedding invite. Save oh, the that's date. very cute. Ooh, your nails look so good. It's not that far away. We could go. It's in April. 427. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, August, uh, very much. And Christian and I have recently been doing a bit where... No matter what time it actually is, if like it's oh it's three twenty, eh. yeah, eh. it's a very good bit. I, I think it's funny every time. I think it's <laughs> actually funny to do it where it's like four twenty seven. Yeah, <laughs> I like to try to squeeze it in before you the can set, get like the, the last digit, yeah. and, it, and then you throw in it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> just dropping in with a glittery Halloween card. I well, would say I'd say that's a Christmas cat oh, with his Christmas what about pumpkin. The bucket? <laughs> Bats are notoriously known for Christmas, Christmas. shenanigans. Yeah. So, 
Who do you think to Santa has to fight f- down the chimney? A frightfully fun Halloween. Thanks. Well, in but, some cultures, Halloween is celebrated on December 25th. It's, this is kind of like a Nightmare Before Christmas situation <gasps> where, like, is that a Halloween movie? Is it a Christmas card? That's I don't know. That's such mm. a better explanation than anything I have said. <laughs> Hi, judges. Hello. If you open this on the pod, you can read my name. And then they don't have it until the very end, which is cool. That's fine. I yeah. have nothing to send y'all, but well wishes. My late grandmother died last September, and she. Mine too. She loved sending out cards. I inherited all of her stamps, but have no one to send cards to. So enjoy this spooky one. Love the pod. <laughs> Being a bi disaster means I can't decide if I want to be Christian's second wife or Erica's first. It's a dilemma, <laughs> truly. What about Josh's? First wife as well. Yeah. That could be. There's a possibility for it. <laughs> or I might be upset. Your pot has gotten me through my seasonal depression. Me too. Thank y'all so much. Hugs and pisses, Montana. From Alabama. Huh. Love that. So we had Montana from Alabama. We got August getting married in April. What's next? What's the deal? That's What's a fun little card. Your is... grandma's memory will live on forever in that card that will sit in a box in this room for months to years to come. For per- perpetuity. Nice. We have little... Whoa! Stockings. Those are so that cute. That says Ricky and Christian and Josh Yay. and Aurora. Yay. I assumed. I actually didn't look at it. It's Aurora. That would That's a bold guess. Are. It could have been Olsen. It could have been. I just assumed it was Aurora. These are cute. Those are right. very cute. It came with a letter. V cute. Oh, and she put little. I assume she. I'm so sorry. Put little stickers on there. Oh, thanks. Excuse me. <laughs> you can say my name in bold, first line say at the top. Name, say my Love name. that. Oh, Hi, judges. Hello. Hello. <laughs> my name is Sydney. Thank you, Sydney. I'm a longtime listener of the pod and have wanted to send something in for a long time, but I could never figure out quite what until I was making stockings this year and decided it would be perfect. I hope you like them. But if you don't, just pretend for me. They're very adorable. Yeah. I've been yeah. sewing for most of my life, but by no means am I a professional. I make lots of things and hope to send you more little tchotchkes in the furniture. I think you meant future, but you spelled well, it furniture. Really furniture. <laughs> that's so funny. It's crazy that they got the word tchotchke right and not <laughs> for future. I know. That's hilarious. I hope you have a wonderful holiday and a happy new year. Pisses and kisses. Piss baby Sydney. Sorry. It's so big. I don't know how to use my phone or my printer. LOL. The text. Oh, the text. That's okay. Uh, her craft Instagram is at Ninny creates. Oh, I'm sorry. Ninny underscore creates. If anyone would like to engage. And I would also like to point out that it's Sydney spelled correctly, in my opinion. S-Y-D-N-E-Y. There's another way to spell it? S-I. Or C-I. Oh. Or it's Cindy. C-Y. You're wrong. I'm just, I'm agreeing. There's just other ways to spell it incorrectly. Hmm. Do we think Sydney is like, I feel like the group of like slightly younger than us to like 20. There's a lot of Sydneys. Yeah, it was a big name in the... Like, I wonder what the gra- the demographics on Sydney's look like. What's the number of Sydney's in 97? Yeah, versus, like, 2009. Yeah. Great question. Is it? Uh-huh. I need, we need a producer to look it up. I'm looking it up. Hey, while you're looking that up... Which means I need to raise. Interesting. That's very interesting. <laughs> interesting. I don't, yeah, I don't need to know the information, then. Name statistics. People named Sydney, S-Y-D-N-E-Y, 20,964. It ranks nationally uh, 1,359th of all names, and it is in the 99.5 percentile. Is that high or low? I think that's low. Yeah, that all, but that's like interesting. I mean, any name is going to be super low, right? Like in the low percentile. Unless it's like John or Muhammad. But even that, it's going to be like... Probably like 90 percentile. 99 percent of the time it's used as a first name based on an analysis of 100 years worth of data from the SSA baby name database. Uh, the estimated population is 160,000. In the U.S.? It's used as a girl's nope, name, worldwide. mostly by white people. Huh. Uh, 
Um, what else did you want to know? Nothing. That's enough. I want to know if you guys oh, want to hear this first story in the for the night. Midwest. Mostly in the Midwest. How about that? Wait, I lied. Well, then that's don't. fucked up. Then about, then mostly about. in Washington D.C. Mid Washington and then Midwest. What Actually, mo- Midwest is the lowest. This is, this is terrible fucked. news for yeah. us. I'm sorry. This heat map confused uh, Well, I guess me. Sydney was from Montana. Is that what we decided? And was yeah. born in August? Yeah. Okay. Let's Erica, get to this first story. We We're don't just look up names on this podcast, remember? Mm. We also podcast on this podcast. What this entails is us going online and finding silly little stories. I'm going to need you to redo it. I messed up and I stumbled and I kept stumbling I kinda forward. I kind of liked it, though. No. It's a little different for the new year. You know, no. when, you know when a hurdler hits one hurdle and mm. then you're like, hope they recover and then just keep hitting hurdles? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was what just happened to me. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we... Go online and find silly little stories. Thank you. And sometimes pissing, pissing Christian does that. <laughs> this is the champagne getting the, to you already? Getting to you. He's he's freaking buzz, guys. It's Thursday. Thirsty, 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 thirsty Thursday. Thursday. From r slash am I the asshole with an H at the end. Nice. Am I the asshole for telling my husband I told you so and laughing at and laughing at me when we got the paternity test results? It's definitely supposed to say him. So she laughed at him and said, I told you so when they got paternity test results. Yep. Give me a real clean title. Am I the asshole for telling my husband, I told you so, and laughing at him when we got the paternity test results? I'm going to go with yes. Uh huh. Was that pretty clean? Yeah. You can cut enough. paternity from somewhere. From the that first one. one. <laughs> I, 27 female, have been married to my husband, 28 male, for two years. And gave birth to our daughter five weeks ago. I'll try to keep this short so I don't waste your time with any irrelevant details. Love that. What happened was that our daughter came out with blonde hair and pale blue eyes. While my husband and I have brown hair and brown eyes. Okay. My husband freaked out at this and refused to listen to my explanation. That sometimes babies are just born with lighter hair and eyes. And that they get darker over time. Pretty common. Extremely. You're common. looking at someone who that <laughs> happened to? Yeah. He demanded a paternity test and then threatened to, to divorce me if I didn't comply. So I did. Okay. After my daughter and I got home from the hospital, my husband went to stay at his parents' house for the first three weeks what? to get some space from me. A newborn baby? Yeah. If two parents have brown eyes, there is a 6.25% chance that the baby will have blue eyes. So it is possible. My my nephew has blue eyes. Both of his parents have brown eyes. Hmm. It's extremely. You don't have brown babies. eyes though. No. Ah. I remember now. My brother is a different dad. Yeah. But also, I was born with much blonder hair and much I was bluer born eyes. With it. <laughs> I was born with blonde hair and much bluer eyes. And as I've gotten older, it's gotten darker and uh, more greenish blue. Mm-hmm. Both my parents have brown eyes. Also, most babies are born with like a bluish gray eye anyway. Yeah. And then it could take up to like nine months to over a year to have their final eye color. Yeah. I think that's what's happening with my nephew. Gotcha. Because he's got the lighter eyes still. He's a little cutie. He is a little cutie. He looks just like Delilah they too. Make, they make good babies. Yeah. They're very cute. And he gets my parents off my freaking back about it. There you go. It doesn't really, though. No, it doesn't. (laughs) Never does. While I recovered, he told me that... uh, We just got to start over because you guys stopped in the middle of a sentence. We love it. After my daughter and I got home from the hospital, my husband went to stay at his parents' house for the first three weeks to get some space from me. That's That's wild. While I recovered and he told me what was happening. And he told them what was happening. It doesn't take three weeks to recant. Oh, yeah, I'm being a bad husband right now, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> My mother-in-law called and informed me that if the paternity test revealed that the child wasn't his, she would do anything within her power to make sure that I was taken to the cleaners during the divorce. I had my sister to lean on and help me take care of the baby during this time. Good sister. We got the results back yesterday, and my husband came home to view them with me. I was on the couch in the living room, so he sat next to me and we started to read the results. They showed that he was the father, and my husband had this shocked, kind of mortified look on his face, with his eyes wide as he stared at the paper. I couldn't help but buzz, 
I couldn't help but bust. I couldn't help but say, I told you so, and then started laughing at the way that he looked. My husband snapped out of his shock and got mad at me for laughing at him. We then argued for a bit, which was mainly him yelling at me, before my sister came downstairs and made my husband shut up. After that, my husband went back to his parents' house to clear his head. And then just th- another three weeks stay. And then three hours later, my mother in law called to scold me about laughing in my husband's face because apparently it was kicking him while he was already down. Aww, Why is he down? Ran to your mommy and cried about it. Wouldn't that be more of a high point that you it just realized that you have a son or yeah. a daughter? Sorry, a daughter. Like, wouldn't that be more of a high point? You would think. She also left a couple nasty texts, essentially saying that the same thing that she said this morning. I don't think I'm an asshole, but I'd like an outsider perspective on this. I still think you're an asshole. It's a, I mean, it's a little bit asshole-ish. Yeah. I think your husband fucking sucks. Yeah. First and foremost, and so does his mom. Like, I don't understand why he's still upset at that point. Like, he should be upset with himself more than anything. Mm-hmm. I think he wanted an out yeah, of the whole that's thing. That's what it seems like. Yeah. And then he, like, picked a fight right afterwards. Yeah. That's what it seems like, is he just wants a heart out. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I don't know. I think he kind of fucking deserves it, if I'm being honest. Well, yeah. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that she's not rude for doing it. We've said people are not an asshole for more than this. So I'm going to say she's not an asshole here. You know what? She did take care of the baby for three weeks without his ass. Yeah. True. So, yeah, we know we're rescinding that she's an asshole an asshole at all. Although we did just say she's being assholeish. We can say she's a butt head, maybe. A bust head. All I'm saying is I've gotten feedback that I'm not judgy enough sometimes. Yeah. So mm. I'm saying that everyone sucks here. Was this from Courtney? Maybe. Okay. Wow, that seems <laughs> Wow. Um, yeah, she's actually the worst person I've ever heard about then. <laughs> I actually think that's so fucked up, and I'm judging her so hard. It's crazy how men, how dudes get so upset about the paternity thing. I know. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of why I wanted to read this one, because yeah. I can't wait to see the Instagram comments. Oh, my Great. God. It's... Now he's going to be pissed off for the next fucking yeah. three weeks. <laughs> but this one's going to kind of be like a rightful, like a, a justice. Yeah. Because I'm going to see everybody commenting, and it's like, oh, you fucking idiots. <laughs> the thing you guys always complain about get proven wrong. Hmm. Hmm. Fuckers. Can I say it? Is this a safe place for me to say this? Yes. Fuckers. Shut the fuck up, Josh. Shut the fuck up, Josh. Shut the fuck up. I had the soundboard upside down. Did we pay attention to when we started recording? Nope. At one point, I looked and it was 16 minutes. Before? Yeah. How did that feel? Like, that was before we actually were. <laughs> we're at 37 I'm... minutes on the board? Yeah. Wow. A lot of cut content this I week. I know I started my first story at 28. R slash nope. relationship underscore advice. Uh, my female 23 boyfriend, 27 male, gives me horrible gifts and I'm fed up. Oh. Horrible gifts. Interesting. Oh. This could go either way. This could go either way. Like, what's your definition of a horrible gift? Kind yeah. of way? Because, like, the thing is, it's gifts. And like it's pr- it, it takes a lot for you to be in the right to be upset about bad gifts. You know what I mean? Because it's a gift. It's a thing you're receiving. Sans like that's payment. a great point. That's a very good point you make. We've been together since 2019. Our first Christmas together, I got him an Alexa. So she was 19 and he was 23. Yes. I don't know. That's that's one of those ones where it's like. Mm. That's a little weird. Could have met at college. Could have been 20 and 22, potentially. Potentially. We've been together since 2019. Our first Christmas together, I got him an Alexa with the accessories to make his apartment a smart home. Okay. Okay. He moved into an apartment around his birthday, so I got him a microwave, a toaster, and silverware. His most recent birthday, I got him an at-home golf set because he's recently become obsessed with golf. Okay. It costs more it's than I expected, flag. but I was happy to give it to him. That one's probably the first one that I would consider a good gift. Josh, you are one for functional gifts. No, no, no. But like, those are like, 
That's like that's like a that's like an easy putt. You know what I'm saying? It's like if I say I need a phone case and you give me a phone case, it's like I wouldn't think that's a good gift. It's an appropriate gift. But if someone if someone if he's getting into golf and she sees that and is like, you know, I'll get him as an at home golf thing. Like that's a good gift. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like there's like a difference between like, uh, like it's like the thought put into the golf one. Is a lot more than like you need silverware. I'm gonna buy you silverware. It's like socks. Socks okay. aren't a good gift. They're a solid. They're gift. a solid gift. They're a neutral gift because it's like everybody needs socks. Everybody likes a good pair of socks. Sure. But no one's gonna be like, I got the craziest socks for Christmas. They were dickies. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Yeah, you're just getting the wrong brand of socks, brother. I, it, we we have on this podcast talked about the socks we got for Christmas. I believe about oh, how much sure. we love them. <laughs> In contrast, our first Christmas together, he gave me a video game and then money that he already owed me. But for that my one's birthday, pretty bad. If it's money that you already owe somebody, that's not a gift. For my birthday, he got me another video game. My birthday and Christmas is coming up same day. Wow, Jesus. I bought him a signed Steelers football because that's his favorite team. Wow. Okay. He just told me the gift that he got me. Why and this t- might be dramatic, but I had to stop myself from crying. This is an insane gift. I oh, man. Okay. <laughs> he went on a solo vacation earlier this year, and my birthday present is that he <laughs> printed out the pictures from his vacation and put them into a photo book for me. That's fucking rude. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. <laughs> now, this is the same gift that he's getting everyone. His mom, his sister, his brother, our friends, and me. He mentioned it before, and I politely told him that I did not want that gift. That's a good gift. That's a. I mm, wouldn't say good. That's a gift for a mom. Yeah, that's a good mom gift for sure. Yeah, you're like, mom, here's the th- here's pictures of me doing things. I actually told him that I would hate this gift, and he just laughed it off. I've been telling him since we started dating that I like things like jewelry and will love that as a gift. He tells me that he hates going into the jewelry store, and more recently, a couple like a couple days ago, he said, "You already have so much jewelry. Why would I buy you more?" Mm-hmm. At this point, it feels disrespectful. And after finding out today that my gift, finding out my gift today, I told him to just not give me anything. It literally feels like he doesn't care about me or my feelings. This caused him to call me materialistic because I like to buy myself things and I feel like if I tell him how I truly feel, he'll just call me materialistic more. Or maybe I am materialistic? Maybe this is a sweet and thoughtful gift and I just ruined it for him? No. (sighs) You can be materialistic. It's kind of fun. You know what I mean? I mean, fuck capitalism. Yeah, but like we're in it. It's like it's fun to be a little hedonistic. Mm-hmm. You know, like especially as as in a gift receiving version. Yeah, you know, like that's kind of the point of a lot of gift giving stuff is like like birthdays, you know, holidays where it's like I would never like I would never buy this for me, but if somebody yeah. else bought it for me, that'd be pretty sick. Yeah, sure. It's like yeah, I have mixed feelings about this because on one hand, like. Oh, you're just like putting up a hand. Yeah, it's probably yeah. everything you say will be in a text block above it. Okay, all right. So on one hand, yeah, you have. I don't even know where I was going with this anymore. It's such a distraction, actually. <laughs> Here, I got it. On one hand, a photo book can be a thoughtful and sentimental gift. Yes, thank you. But you would be better off going with pictures of you and your girlfriend yes not pictures of you on a vacation and showing how much fun you had without her correct that's where i was going with that thank you honey. and then on the other hand getting the same gift for everybody also fucked up it doesn't matter that it's already a bad gift that he's getting pictures of just him like get pictures of your girlfriend you fucking psycho but then to give the same exact gift out to everybody in your life now it's not even a special gift you're just giving out you're just giving out fucking a paperweight at this point. Okay, but in one hand third, third hand <laughs> up here. In one hand you've got, you know, if it's sentimental, like if you're making something, right? Yeah. And you're giving that to multiple people, that's still a thoughtful gift. Yeah. Uh, yeah on another hand, I would say 
just going on to Shutterfly.com and getting a photo book printed out isn't making something. I would disagree. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, have you ever scrapbooked? Scrapbook okay, is scrapbook different. Is different. Okay. But like just even that the process of like putting pictures in pages is like it's a labor. Time, yes, it's time consuming. I agree with and that. And trying to make it like cute. Yeah. And because if you, you just like did that? do you think he did that? I don't know. Get out of that, Josh. <laughs> On one hand, he he might he might be very artistic or something it sounds like you're dating a broke boy who is has social anxiety and uh also is just like not sentimental he can't be that broke he went on a solo vacay well that's true i just didn't have to borrow money borrowing money and then uh using that as a gift and then also like buying a video game like a video game is kind of like I don't know, bare bones. But Bro, sometimes uh, video games are fucking expensive. I mean, that's yeah. true. I mean, maximum of $70. You know, sometimes they're more playing? than that. I guess if you're going to do a pre order bonus, which we don't support in this household. Okay. Anyway, in one hand, you've got. <laughs> How many hands do I have? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It, 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 like I said, it's, it's pretty hard to be like in the right of being upset about somebody's gifts. But especially in this, like, she is communicating, like, here are things I want. And, like, I personally, when it comes to gifts, like, throughout the year for Aurora specifically, because I spend the most time around her, um, throughout the year, I'll write down things that she says that she wants. That way she forgets about it. God, I wish I could just have that thought cross my mind. And even if it's something small, like, I'm getting her Waikiki Beach Coconut uh, Bath and Body Works lotion and spray. You're going to spoil her Christmas <laughs> present, dude. <laughs> she, yeah, oh, if she's in here when I'm editing this, she's fucked. Um because like four or five months ago, she's like she went on like a death hunt looking for it, but it's seasonal, so mm-hmm. she, it was all out of stock. Uh, it was actually really funny. We went to the Bath and Body Works after seeing Barbie with Rachel, and we were in the mall at the Bath and Body Works, and she was still like crying from Barbie from the last like scene, and she was like, "I really just want Bucky Kiki Beach Coconut." And the working at the Bath and Body Works was like. Honey, I'm so sorry. We don't have it anymore. She's like, it's okay. (laughs) (laughs) It was so funny. Um, But yeah, so like that's like that's the example of a good gift in the sense of like you're putting the time and effort into it versus like the photo album is like, like, yeah, you're putting effort into it, but it's like not something they want. Yeah, like that is just a burden on the person of like, oh, like you could have shown me these pictures. Like as the girlfriend, you could have shown me the pic these pictures on your phone. Yeah, and like. That would have been just as fun for me, you know? I just don't believe he's putting in the time and effort to make it look good. What I'm hearing from this story <laughs> is that he doesn't have gift giving as a love language. Sure. that's. Mm-hmm. And I think the two of you should probably agree upon not doing gifts anymore. Like, but, that should just be... I mean, I have a thing where... Or break up. That's always that's a very good option. Honestly. Throwing that out there, maybe you guys are just not compatible. Is, especially, especially if this is that. Sorry to cut you off. Okay. Especially if, if this is that big of a deal for you. Yeah, he's clearly not getting it. That's what I mean. Is the communication was there exactly, and he's, and he's still not it. getting it. Yeah. So maybe break up. And like with her saying like a video game, it's like is she not into video games at all? Because like I could buy Aurora Pikmin Four, and she'd go fucking crazy over it, right? Yeah. But that's because Aurora would want Pikmin Four. You know, um, thoughts, Christian. There is a Pikmin Four. That's a real game. Yeah. When did Pikmin Three happen? Like a long time ago. Oh, yeah, I'm out of touch. I don't even know what game you're referring to. So, Alamar, Pik- Pikmin, the Pikmin, Pikmin, Pac-Man. Pikmin. No, no. Well, I don't. I mean, as somebody that's terrible at getting gifts, yeah, I feel like. Even I, that's why I'm so upset. I, this feels like a slap in the face to be like, I'm gonna get the same gift for everybody to just get like a blanket gift for everybody. It's a it's, bad cop out, yeah. Like, it's already the minimum effort gift, it's in bad taste. It doesn't <laughs> show that you care about your partner yeah. at all. I think that's the big thing, right? And then, yeah, I think every, every aspect of this is like, you don't actually like your girlfriend. This person also might just be scorned by being a Christmas baby. Mm. Because it's double extra special and he's really fucking her over. <laughs> that, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. That is a very good point. As someone whose mom is a Christmas baby and girlfriend is a Christmas baby, uh, 
it's very hard to balance that. December but, birthdays are hard. Yeah. But the 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 reason, like my ide- ideology with that is, I treat birthdays as like events. It's like with Aurora, I don't really get her something for her birthday. We go and do something. Okay. You know. See, I would prefer that way. And that way, Christmas is the gift giving thing in our household, and then the birthdays is a thing of like we're like two years ago we went up and saw one of our favorite bands in Chicago. Last year or this year we went up to uh, Naperville and painted pottery and did made a whole day out of it. And the two years before that, um, we did something else cute, I imagine. But uh, yeah, like that's that's my motto on it. Like it, that to me, because especially because I'm in June and my birthday, uh, objectively, you know, the best month to have it. Cause oh it's well, the exactly. furthest Six away from away. yeah, furthest away from Christmas as you can get. Um, why? I was just gonna say we celebrate Christmas in July. Why do we <laughs> celebrate Christmas in July when it's not the halfway point? The halfway mark is day one eighty. I bet you it is in July actually. Because the end of June would be a hundred eighty. I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway. Just do six months. Do exactly six months away. Not by number of days. Let's just do what is half what day is half Christmas? How about that? What? Fuck. Day He's gonna want to raise for half. being a producer now too. This is fucked well, up. If we all get a raise, we don't get anything. Collectively. Twenty hmm. fifth of June. How about that? So my birthday's two days after it. But even then, like I like as a kid it was cool because you got gifts on a six month rotation. But now it's like, let's just go, like, that's why I hold, like, the big parties and stuff. Is like, yeah. I just want it to be a fun, like, celebration and, like, you know, not really have it be about uh, gifts. That's just my own personal thing. Why did you start to kick me out of your party if I, since I didn't bring a good enough gift last year? Well, you, you brought me an indoor golf set, and I told you I don't like golf. Okay, fair enough. I should listen to you more. It's, it felt he like specifically one... said he wanted a karaoke machine. You <laughs> yeah. didn't get it for him. Yeah. It felt like one of those gifts where you bought it so you could come over and play it. I can show you how to use it any weekend if you want me to. And you know what? If you really don't like it, like I'll just take it. Yeah. I, can, I lost the receipt, but I can return it for you. <laughs> I'll return worry. it for you. <laughs> you know what's wild? I was just thinking about. You've never had to buy gifts for anyone but me. Yeah. Because when we started dating, we were teenagers. So by the time like we were adults oh. and buying gifts for other people, I was the one doing it for him. Sure. So the only person he has to buy for is me. I still fuck up. And I buy all the gifts for everybody else and just slap his name on it like he did it. Sure. Man, we're really showing the the incompetent, like, husband. Well, you make all the money. That doesn't fucking matter. Um, (laughs) We're really showing the incompetent. Only this year. (laughs) This is the first year that he's been the one solely providing. Technically, you're making money, too. Technically. It just goes into one bank account right now. Uh, Break time. Break. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the side of the podcast. Here we are. Time for s- me to tell me about that circle, George. I thought, I thought I, Aurora recorded one I for us. I cut it out. We haven't put it on this card yet. That's right, folks. New Year's or which, my card. New Year's, which means new me, which means we go over our New Year's resies. <laughs> Fun little kawinky dink, Erica. Hmm. Is I was editing the bonus episode from last week where we ate hot wings mm-hmm. with Stacy and Sal, mm-hmm. and I for whatever reason I don't remember the context said January the January two, and then you were like ah who says that and then I listened to last year's New Year's episode to like see what we said and in it I say January two. Did I also have the same reaction? No, that, no oh, reaction. Who says that? No reaction. But it huh. did strike me as odd that I said January two twice. It doesn't strike me. As odd at all, because you say dumb shit like that all the time. Yeah. I also said last year uh, that we have unbridled resolutions. You like did unmatch Riz? Riz. Yeah, we talked about Riz on it. Yeah. That early? I mean, I don't think it was early back then. Really? Yeah, I think Riz has been on for a long time. Riz has, you know what, Riz has been going for a little bit. Anywho. But Rizzler and stuff is... Yeah, sticking out your gyat for the Rizzler is a little newer. Eric, do you remember what your last year's resi was? Yep, it was to read at least five books. And? I read seven. Whoa! Wow. Also last year, <laughs> uh, when you said that your resolution was to read more books, I said, I have something you might be interested in, and I was talking about the Leftist Book Club that I kind of started last month. So how about oh. that? I read Almond uh, by Son Won Pyong. It was very good. 
It's a short read. It's very, very good. I've heard really good things about that book. Yeah. And then I read Severance by Ling Ma. Wasn't what I expected. And then I read the David Bad trilogy, uh, starting with The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. And then I read The Good Son by Jacqueline Mitchard. And then I read... Bad last name. Yeah. It was an okay That's book. an author last name, though. Can I say That's that? That's true. That's true. And then I read The Woman in Me by Britney Spears. Mm. It was dog shit. Was it really? Oh, my God. What was it about? It's her biography. But like... An autobiography. In her whole life? autobiography? Yeah, she wrote it. And it's very obvious that she wrote it. Well, that's mm. good. It was horrible. Horrible it, writing. Is that better than having a ghostwriter or worse, I guess? Worse. It's, it was worse because it was, it was just like... It was the equivalent of her uh, knife dancing videos, but on paper. Yeah. Well, didn't I was about to mention like how she like cut herself? Yeah. yeah. So fucking funny, man. Yeah. I the only reason I read that is because my cousins and my mom and I will like do like have attempted to do a, a book club, which is the Good Son. Mm-hmm. That one book I mentioned that was also the only reason I read that was awesome. because of that. Was that your only resolution for the last year? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. What did I have? Christian, you well. What's your resolution for this year? Ooh, good question. I'm sorry. Come back to me. Uh, okay, uh, Christian. Yours was learn to. Cr- you had three. Okay. Learn to crump. Check. Make a podcast. Like a second one. Ah oh, shit. And learn to listen. Okay, I have learned to listen. I think. Why are you looking at me? What? Do you guys think I've learned to listen better? No. What the fuck? Well, I think that's why he's looking at you then for an answer. You don't think I'm? You don't think I'm a? a you can't good hear for shit. That hearing and listening is different. Yeah. Well, you can't listen if you can't hear. True. This is fucked up. Uh, this sounds very ableist of you. I was right gonna right. say you're being so ableist right now. Against your husband specifically. Fuck. Yeah. I, you know what? That does sound. Ableist. This is a I real thing of that. Cain and Abel situation. I've had an ear infection for the last two months. Oh, longer than that, bud. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah, I thought it was just, I used D-Brox for too long. It turns out, goop sh- shouldn't just be falling out of your ear. Yeah. Well, unless you're Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, maybe. I mean, I even went on a round of antibiotics, and it was like, two weeks, I was like, oh, okay, now my ear can be normal. And guess what? Back the goop dripping out of it, so. It's disgusting, and it Interesting. smells bad. Oh, Yeah. I'm going. I can imagine. It's, it's got to be bad, whatever's going on in there. Yeah. So what's your New Year's resolutions for this year? Well, I thought I'd set more attainable, more attainable resis, so. Yeah. I don't like calling them resis. One, I think I want to read at least one book this year. Interesting. I'm okay. going to start small. I'm 100 pages into a book. I'm hoping, you know, the next 200 pages... I finish at the beginning of next year. Sure. Yeah, you're timing it out. It's out of the way early. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Next one, achievable goals. Maybe maybe learn how to do a backflip. Okay. Wow. That would be kind of fucking sick, right? That'd be dope. You know what? Your nephew can do a backflip. He he could teach you. Yeah, I think I only have to lose 120 pounds and I can probably fucking crush him. Nah, you don't need to lose weight to learn how to do a backflip. You just have to have confidence. Well... I saw I TikTok. Got that. Saw TikTok the other day that was uh, girls like you just got to trick your muscles into doing a backflip. You just got to surprise yeah. them. And then I believe that honestly. <laughs> she went to do it and fell right on her head. Yeah, yeah. shit. You should have told me that part because I. You told me that I was like, wait, maybe I could do it right now. Yeah. No, I don't think I can. And then I think I like to have a, n- a nice rule of three here. Maybe I start a second podcast. <laughs> yeah. That's a big one. Achievable. Yeah. That's all happen eventually. Sure. What yeah, was yeah, your sure. New Year's resolution? Mine was uh, get an editor for the. Actually, I said two to three. Two to three editors? Yeah. At the end. Wow. And we haven't done that. Mm. So. I think we'd have to really be pumping out content to get. Two to three is pretty crazy. Yeah. That was very, that was very aspirational of me. Yeah. I think we really dreamed big last year. Sure. And maybe we should just... I had an attainable goal, and I met yeah. it, so... Uh, I kind of had a shit year. Really? Did you? Yeah. Dog died. Oh, oh man. Podcast ended. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that's really it. But that those two events really drained me in the middle there. Yeah. So... 
I don't yeah. know. You know, you kind of took it all in stride, though. Like I, yeah. Well, luckily it was summer. If it was the winter, oof. On top of the seasonal uh, yeah, depression, I, it would have been rough. It would have been real bad. I would be playing Baldur's Gate twelve hours a day. Now I'm only playing at eight. Man, seasonal depression is real right now. I'm yeah. I'm in the rough of it. I'm. You I'm, struggling? Yeah. I mean, I think mm. you know what might might be is just like well, obviously international conflicts but also just like it coming up on like a election year mm-hmm. yeah. on top of everything it's just oh like my god it just you just man you know it's just sad everywhere it's everywhere sad everywhere. it's and like i'm a nihilist so you're not gonna get any like positive vibe from me yeah remember the beginning of 2023 when it was just like bad shit every other day yeah 2023 yeah like the beginning of this year no like i don't benny remember. white died oh okay uh, Shit with Ukraine just... started. Yeah. Was that 2023? Mm-hmm. I think wow. so, right? There was a lot of bad shit in like the first three months. Wow. Yeah. Because yeah. it was a bad it year. It was one of those things where we were like, ooh, COVID's been fucking all of us up. Like, COVID's finally gone. It's over. We're going right. to we're gonna make the best of it. And then COVID, yeah. I don't know, 8.0 came in and <laughs> really, really put a damper on the that. New, and... The new update, yeah. I do fear that because, you know... Obviously, you look back in the past as, you know, like better years or whatever. I feel like 2023 is getting on. And like, obviously, I had a lot of personal stuff, too. But I feel like 2023 is getting a little bit off the hook of like, it was a pretty shitty year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, it was pretty bad. I bet. It I was bet good for week, me, but like bad for in general. A lot of stuff was bad in 2023. Yeah. It was for sure. But I had a good time. Like, what so. was a better year, 2022 or 2023? In my opinion, 2022 was. I don't even remember what happened in 2022. We had a baby. And that was cool. Yeah. Started a podcast in 2022. That was pretty yeah. fun. Yeah, that was exciting times. Yeah. For a minute. <laughs> for you. I said for a minute. Oh, for a minute. Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, my resolution's nothing. I think I peaked, actually. Whoa. Yeah. I think kind of how I was feeling. I think I'm going to ride the high. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You know what? I want to journal more. Mm. We love it. Oh, do you? Royal we. Anyways. I started journaling and then I just like haven't yeah. kept up with it. So I want to do better about that. I believe in you. I think you can do it. For I'm sure. not committing to every day because I got time for that. Yeah. But more than what I've been doing, which maybe is we, maybe very we infrequent. Ponders with Ricky episode. Ooh. Mm. Like, not even necessarily but inebriated. allegedly inebriated. Just write down some of your... Jot down your little thoughts that are going on. What's those sick fucking <clears throat> thoughts going through your brain? You know what? I I should just, like, keep a dream journal, actually, because that shit's wild. Your no. dreams are too complex. You, dreams are never fun to listen to. I, have you ever heard me tell you about one of my dreams? But, they're like yeah, on a fucking is, movie. They they're put insane. me to sleep. I'll tell you that much. Josh is right though. You would have to write it down, There's, and then we'd have to go through and kind of make it a little uh, more concise. Dreams are great until I don't know the third sentence where someone's like, "And I was at my aunt's house, but it wasn't really my aunt's house, but it, it, it was my aunt's house." It's I like, could tell it was my aunt's house. It's like, yeah, I don't know either of those. I don't know what your aunt's house looks like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I do <laughs> understand <laughs> your dreams are insane, and mm-hmm. like you tell me, it's like. To me, I'm just like, how does your brain fucking come up with that? But I get where Josh is also coming from, where it's like, there is always so many details when people so tell dreams, context and it's required. so much specific knowledge, where it's like, uh, what? And then me with like a bad imagination, when you're like, yeah, this really crazy, vivid thing happened, I'm just like, I can't even picture it. You know those dreams where you pick back up, and you're in like, you're like starting back into an adventure, like, oh, I haven't dreamt this in a while. You just like pick back up on a story. I used to be able to do that as a kid. I don't. I can't do that. That's anymore. just wild. Are you mad at us about the dream thing? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. Yeah. No, it's a stupid fucking idea. I'll keep my yeah, ideas to myself. I'm letting you know that. Yeah, friends, I appreciate friends it. Friends look out for each other. Uh huh. Yeah. I want you to achieve your dreams. I don't want you to just talk about them. Mm. Yeah, but my dreams are about like tornadoes and zombies and aliens and, and shit. You can so do it. I'm not trying to do that. You can do it. I do think, <laughs> I think there could be content there. I'm That's just saying fine. you recounting a dream could take 25 minutes and. Right. But like your circle judges and Josh's circle judges aren't nearly ever that long. 
ever. This one right now. This one right now is, but huh. not usually. Huh. You are cr- me, maybe. Josh's aren't that long. Hmm. Okay. Mine's because I'm like, I don't know, five looks like not enough things to talk about. And then I put down seven and it's like, how did that take an extra here's, 25 minutes? Here's a genuine question that I'm I'm seriously pontificating. Have you ever heard somebody else's dream like being told to you? And then with that person not in the room, you went and told somebody else about that person's dream? Damn. So that's to me is like, I don't know. Dreams are like really interesting for the person who drumped it. Drumped? Yeah. But that's the to right anybody pass. else, it's like, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. I don't know. Um, there was this one famous dude who had a dream, and then lots of people have talked oh, about God. his dream. So <laughs> I just got MOK checked. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, that is crazy. What a way to I, win an <laughs> argument. <laughs> I do have to say, we got, you know, we all got the criticism of we're not judgy enough on the podcast. And Josh got judgy and. You weren't accepting the job. Christian okay. got judgy of journals once, one upon a time, and you also got. <laughs> First of all, we're here to judge other people. Not in the circle, judge. Damn. <laughs> fuck you, right? You, I'll hit it for you. Shut the fuck up, Josh. Shut the fuck up, Josh. Shut the fuck up. No, no, that was <laughs> that was a solid point he made. <laughs> this is the only time where we can judge each other. Yeah, that that is kind of the whole point of it. Yeah, but. Just because you're allowed to judge me doesn't mean I'm not allowed to have feelings about it. Correct. That's so true. You should journal sorry. about that. You got my ass on that one. Yeah. Well, now I feel like you're patronizing me. I am being 100% serious right now. All right. But you're it really, also doesn't mean we can't make you. fun of you about it. Ooh. You know? Valid? Yeah. I can think you're a piece of shit, though. You think I'm a piece of shit? No, I'm just, me. I'm literally pointing to him. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I'm wearing a mirror. No! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Anywho, Christian, Anywho, what are you up to the circle jerk? We listened to a listener submitted sound. Wait, this was- what's my. Oh, never mind. I said journaling. Yeah. I was like, what am I going to do this year? Actually, can I do a caveat? Please. Sure. I would also like to just be more creative in general, like pick up a new art form. Okay. Tap? Um. Interesting. I was thinking more like (laughs) like drawing or coloring or like painting. Painting. Like I would really like to pick up watercolors, I think. How I would love to see you get into that. I think I could be good at it. Yeah. How about birding? No. I fucking hate birds. Yeah. I would love to see you get into a a new art. Would have been a great Christmas gift. Still can be. Please, Hobby Lobby, be open tomorrow. The most basic, the most basic watercolor set, like for like a six year old. <laughs> I think I want to get into Gundam model making. Yeah. Hmm. More. More. <laughs> I'm just saying, I did give that as a Christmas idea, and there's no way that's happening, right? <laughs> Hobby Lobby is open tomorrow, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing: if you go to Hobby Lobby, you're gonna have to go on Reddit, and you're gonna have to look for good kits from Hobby Lobby because a lot of the times they have dog shit kits. So you just all the other kids with well, the dog shit Well, it's gonna be crazy if, if you did you tell your secret Santa that? No. Well no. shit. You're gonna lose your shit at the Secret Santa I, gift. Allegedly not I for just, me. I just Aurora. gotta say when we first said Secret Santa I said, oh, I'll send you a link to Gundams that I wanted and then you I got kind of yelled at about giving the idea of Gundams out to too many people. You well, said not everybody can get you a Gundam set. And I went, huh, I promise okay. you what someone got you is amazing and nobody else got it for you. And it has nothing to do with Gundam. Shit. I forgot about Gundams altogether. That's all right. So By the time I was like, if I wanted this, I should probably let Erica know. I was like, ooh, it's not going to get shipped here in time. Sorry. But, but you've got a birthday coming up. I got a different idea for birthday present. I'll tell you later. Um... After the circle, George, we always have a listener submitted sound. This sound comes to us from Mako. Thanks, Mako. Sup? Say my name if you can. My name is Mako. It rhymes with taco. Here's a clip of my three-year-old saying, hell yeah, titties. Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, Hi, Christian, and let me get that in. Classic Christian. Classic Christian. Stepping on toes. Doesn't let my wife talk. My 
Uh, ee. my late brother used to teach my son to say all kinds of inappropriate things. LOL. Love that. For I've me. always wanted for an you. excuse to write into you, and then I remembered I have this soundbite. So enjoy hugs and pisses. Oh yeah, titty. That's so short. I guess I don't know what I was expecting. But Hell yeah. It delivered on oh its yeah, promise. Delivered on its promise. Love that. Hell yeah. This is incredible. Titties. That one's for Ricky. I knew she would love it. I did love it. Well, Thank it's for you. Mako as well. And Mako's late brother. And Mako's son. And Mako's son, yeah. Somebody did say, uh, somebody commented, Christian probably got the name Anamanabia because of old son. And I said, you fool. You spelled Olsen wrong. <laughs> you absolute fool. O L S E N. Olsen. Olsen. And I'm sorry. I thought you guys could just talk for one second while I was reading. I'm sorry. Made me look like a complete asshole over here, Josh. Fucker. After listen, after the listener submitted sound, we always have a listener submitted story. This one coming to us from, I hope I can find it. Why does that say spum on it? Uh, it's short for spumante. No, it says spumante. Mm. Uh, I just thought spum nice was funny. thick cup of spum. Yeah. Oh, gross. Spit and cum. Ooh. It does kind of have that consistency, huh? No. <laughs> If, lied. You're, if your spit mixed with cum has <laughs> I'm hydrated bubbles in it, you got uh, issues. You I got yeast in my balls. <laughs> I'm being redneck. <laughs> uh that champagne hit me pretty decently. I'm very surprised. Yeah, it's good shit, and it was only like four bucks. It's, wow. Yeah. Such it's a good deal. Perfect for a shelf. mimosa. It's, it's good too. Bottom shelf. Yeah. It's so fucking good. It's good champagne. It's the best yeah. champagne, champagne I ever had was a sweet red champagne from Barefoot. Okay. And I've never been able to find it after the first year I had it, but it was so fucking good. I do like Barefoot. There's um uh champagne by the local winery. Yeah. It's the best. Actually, they've got two. They've got one called Mardi Gras and one called Angel of Hope, and they're both spectacular. Hmm. Expensive though. Expensive. Oh, fuck that. We're getting Andre by Brute. No, Brute is a is a Brute type. by Andre. No, no. This Where is do you a, see Brute? There's not Brute on there because just, it's Brute's not a, a different kind of fuck. Yeah, it's a spumante. We're getting spum by Andre. We're getting Andre spum. Andre spumante. I would let Andre spum me. Am I the asshole for breaking up with a guy because he's in love with his sister? Whoa! Hang on. We need a lot of context. Please? I mean, do we need context? No, you're not an asshole. Never. All right, moving never on. Never will you be an asshole in this situation. Unless, Agreed. Unless. Oh, let's you hear can't out. Let's like hear your out. siblings. What if his sister's really hot? She's so hot and so funny and so smart and so kind. Y- you know what? Your sister is. I don't like that we're spelling it this way. <laughs> Please don't use my name. And sorry if this is too long. It's so it's, short. It's one and a half paragraphs. <laughs> Long time listener, first time submitter. I used to relate to uh I used to relate with Eric and Christian because I also was in a long term relationship with my high school sweetheart. But after our second child was born, I realized we were starting to grow apart. Real bad, together. Real bad timing to and realize that we broke up. That led to me at the ripe age of thirty one with two kids to download my very first dating app. Love that for you. I have a hundred stories about that but here's just one for now i met and started seeing a guy off a hinge he seemed nice and normal and i remember that he featured his sister in both a written prompt and in one of the pictures strange for sure close with his family green flag we went we went on a couple dates and we're getting to know each other more and more he had moved in with his sister her husband and two kids after a messy divorce which I understood all too well. He had mentioned his sister was adopted, which kind of made sense because him and the Mm. woman featured on his profile were of different races. But I know families come in all different ways, so I hadn't thought anything of it. But on one date, he showed me a family photo of his parents, brother, and a younger sister that was 
not the woman that I had seen. I asked him about that, and he said that uh, that that was his adopted sister, and that the other woman was actually just a really close friend. And they had decided that because they were so close, they're practically family. And just started to call each other brother and sister. I admit, learning this information three dates in was weird for me. Mm-hmm. Having, having been led to believe that this woman and he lived with and talked about all the time was his adopted sister. But he was a great guy, so I let it go. It wasn't, it wasn't over for me officially until date number four, where he said that her two children looked up to him as a father figure, more so than their own father, After and f- even respected him more. What a bold statement. At this point, I realized this man wanted to be more than just a brother to this woman, and that I could not be introducing this messy situation to my or my children's lives, mm-hmm. yeah. and I had to cut it off. I never gave, gave him an exact reason, though, or confronted him about the weird brother-sister si- brother, situation, and now I'm wondering if I should have communicated that with him, or I was simply cutting ties the right move. Hmm. So, judges, am I the asshole? I mean, you're four no. dates in. I think you're yeah, all right. No. It's not your job to fix him. Correct. Yeah. Maybe he'll start putting two and two together when he realizes the girl that he's friend zoned by is the reason why he's not emotionally available. Mm-hmm. True. That's crazy. True. How wild would that be to be like? Because the way he was like, he was going out of his way to like throw up smoke screens like oh no it's my adopted sister it's to like, even say that in the beginning is crazy yeah. to like open on date one with a lie yeah and then by date four it's like actually all of that was i was lying by the way i mean she's a sister in a sense yeah yeah i don't like that did it say how long they were they knew each other him and the sister no it did not say that's wild should she have said anything to the guy or should she have just been I mean, you you should, because, like, how's he ever going to improve himself and figure his shit out if you don't say something? But then at the same time, like, it's also not your responsibility to do it. And that's a hard conversation to have, and I wouldn't do it, so. Date four is pretty crazy. Yeah. Date four to learn that much information about someone is pretty crazy. Yeah. Do you think that's, like, too soon or not? Or wait. I mean that that's just shows how fucking like feckless this dude's desires are to have a rela- to have a relationship, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good one. I don't think that's a real word. I'm so <laughs> oh, it impressed. Is. Without feck. Hmm. Oh. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> there you go. Um You're in the spirit of it. Uh it's just like it's just like the dude is doesn't understand the idea of like the grace period when you start dating of like not putting out all of your crazy at the beginning. Uh-huh. He doesn't understand that him not being emotionally available is a bad thing. But when you're getting into a relationship, like, like he probably thought that was like a good thing to say because she has kids. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah. Oh no, I'm great with my, which was my girlfriend's kids actually. So if you became my girlfriend, then I might be good with your kids. I, your kids would probably respect me more than their own father. Honestly. I also feel that like, you don't want to wait too long to say like, "Oh, I have a girl best friend." Yeah, but to divulge that you're like kind of in love with her is kind of crazy. Well, he didn't. It's oh, just I mean, as how obvious. Implied. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a give and a take. There's a little cat and mouse game when you start dating, and this guy's okay. not doing it right. Although they are older, so I guess it's a little bit different. Christian, grab mm-hmm. your glass real quick. Cheers! Not having to deal with that. Cheers! Not having to deal with that. Mm. Oh, see, this is what the flutes were for. How come they don't make champagne piccolos? They're like smaller champagne flutes. Is a piccolo Boo. smaller than a flute? Yes. Wow. Oh, Erica, that reminds me. Somebody in the Discord um, is actually the person who inspired the uh, tweets that sort of banged thing. Uh, made a little thing, and I need to read it for you. Okay, so they said, I hope Ricky enjoys this horrible joke. Tuberculosis, trachea, lungs, infection, tuberculosis, bacteria. Who are those men? Who are the... Hmm. You've said all of the bits to make the joke. What? What's the top? Men. And what's the bottom? Tuberculosis. What's shorthand? 
TB. Yeah, put it all together. <gasps> Men TB. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Uh, Thoughts? I loved it. I got three carrot emojis in the uh, Discord, and I said I can hear the boo already. I do. And then Winter pointed out it's a science joke. It's She's an required infectious to laugh. disease joke. And You're then, required to laugh. <laughs> I said, forgot about the infectious disease clause, Article Three, Section Nine. Yes, I loved it. So there you go. There Took you go. Me a I do have to say. Cerebral. It was it's cerebral. A little cer- it's a little cerebral, but it was on the heels of the merch drop, so it was a little bit more in context. Back okay. Then. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Final story of the night. What? From r slash am I the asshole? But I just don't want it to end. Good thing there's another doghouse. Doghouse. <laughs> doghouse. Oh, weekly bonus <laughs> episode. Am I the asshole for yes. refusing to volunteer as a doctor on a flight? Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Off title alone, I'm gonna go with yeah. I do feel like there's a little thing called a Hippocratic oath that kind mm-hmm. of it makes However, you a hypocrite. That says do no harm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. That's a great point you make. It doesn't say I have to help anybody. As long as I'm not I mean, making it does more say that, harm. right? Am I making shit up? I have no idea. I not a doctor, believe it or not. I, male mid thirties, am a medical doctor working as an in- Internal medicine hospitalist at a major hospital. Okay. I don't know what a hospitalist. Hospitalist sounds like a made up word. Recently, I was on a long haul international flight. Usually I sleep on flights, but this was during my waking hours. So I decided to spend my time enjoying the in-flight entertainment and free drinks. Free drinks? It's gotta be first class, right? He's a doctor. doctor. He's a hospitalist. I had already been drinking even before the flight while I was in the lounge. I wasn't slurring or excessively drunk, but I was feeling a strong buzz. Yeah. Usually, I don't chat with my co-passengers. I just sleep or do my own thing. But on this flight, the configuration of the business class cabin was such that the passengers in the middle row were practically just beside each other. There was just a small barrier separating me and my co-passenger. Uh, that could be raised, but it still didn't go, still didn't do much to separate us. Oh, woe is you. You have to sit next to somebody on a plane? Yeah, but the divider only goes up to here. I feel, is that, is that like standard on an international flight? I a have divider? No idea. We'll let you know in March. We're not in months. business class, baby. Are you guys so, going in March? Well, I thought we'll it was get September. back in March. I don't know why I thought you said September. Um, this this I have no sympathy for this guy. Okay. He's complaining about because he's in business class, which isn't first class, but it's one yeah. above economy, yeah. yeah. Second class. Basically. But you still have to pay an upgrade to sit there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fuck this guy. Everybody should be crammed in there like sardines. Fair enough, honestly. If one person if if there's I mean, this is more anti-capitalist, but if there's a single seat on that plane or se- seating section where people are crammed in like sardines, then everybody should be like that. I fucking hate this bullshit. Obviously, the the opposite would be more ideal. They didn't just cram everybody in like sardines. Yeah. But this guy's fucking complaining that he doesn't have a proper divider between his seats while there's people in economy that are like sitting on top of each other to get a cheaper seat. Uh. My co-passenger started up a conversation, and being a little intoxicated, I was also feeling chatty. When she asked what I do, I mentioned I'm a doctor, and I work at such and such hospital. After some more small talk, we both started doing our own thing. I was trying to watch my movie and enjoy my drinks when an announcement was made asking if there's a doctor on the flight. Normally, I'd present myself to the cabin crew and help out. But after several hours of on-flight boozing, I was pretty drunk. Makes sense. I was not able to think clearly and probably would have done more harm than good in such a situation. Hippocratic oath. Correct. Yeah, you're not supposed to do harm. Right. Yeah. I didn't react to the announcement at all. I continued watching my movie and drinking my drink. My co-passenger then tapped me and said that they just announced that they need a doctor. I replied that someone else would help or they would get instructions from the medical, medical team on the ground. She tried convincing me to go help, but I refused. She then said that I was being unbelievable and that I'm an asshole and that if the passenger died, it's my fault. I said, listen, lady, just because I'm a doctor doesn't mean I'm not on. Just because I'm a doctor doesn't mean I'm on call 24 seven to provide medical care on demand. Mm -hmm. 
I work when I'm at the hospital. Outside, I'm just like everyone else, and I'm entitled to have a drink and be able to relax. Yeah. She had a disgusted look on her face, but didn't talk to me after that. I didn't want to engage with her either. Well, I'm, she didn't ask you to get married. <laughs> I mean, that's where I was heading. Yeah. It's kind of a... It was a meet cute. It was a meet cute. This was a Hallmark Christmas movie, basically. <laughs> Their hands met while they tried to <laughs> raise, put, the divider. raise the divider. And they're like, <gasps> I love your nails. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened to the passenger who needed medical assistance, but since I didn't hear any more announcements, I assumed all was well. While exiting the aircraft, the lady called me an asshole again. In my mind, that's I'm, crazy. <laughs> I'm very clear that since I was intoxicated, I could not provide medical assistance. I was drinking on my own time, and there was no expectation that I would that I would need to be sober on this flight. Doctors get to enjoy their life too. Mm -hmm. I can't stay sober on every flight, just in case there's an emergency. I don't think I'm the asshole, but I thought I'd get external opinions. So. Do you guys think I'm an asshole? Nah. You can tell he's a fucking doctor. Wrote a whole ass dissertation. Yeah. Didn't say shit. Probably didn't even write good. Am I right, folks? He did have a couple spelling errors in there that I... That fucking idiot. Fucking idiot. How, how the heck did you become a doctor? I do think it's funny trying to imagine, like, other professions in, like, this scenario. Like, someone's car breaks down like is there a mechanic on the flight we like, need an hvac <laughs> we need maintenance HVAC repairman <laughs> yeah like if their ac goes up <laughs> <out. laughs> no he's he's right yeah you know he's a, he's entitled to he's off the clock yeah he's allowed to he's on his vacation or whatever he's allowed to do what he needs to do i mean the fact that he's drunk it's like i get where the the lady's coming from like she's like you should go do something. You're a doctor. You're able to do something. But it's like, she's not taking into account that he's drunk and he should not be help, trying to help somebody that's yeah. in a like dangerous situation. And if they never made another announcement. It must yeah. not have been like that crazy of an emergency. Or a second, a different doctor was there. Right. That could be too. But I'd also like to just point out that um, liability is insane. The de yeah, right. Depends on like the Good Samaritan laws. Well, this would be maritime laws. Yeah, you never really know. Do maritime laws count in the air? And would air time. Air time. <laughs> <laughs> I Boo. I guess my biggest feeling about this is we all pay to have a fucking f air marshal on our flights. Why can't we have the equivalent of an air paramedic? I was going to say that. Like, I feel like the onus should be on the the airplane like company. Yeah. I feel like it can't cost that much more than having a fucking air marshal or whatever the fuck they're called. Yeah. And how many mm. how many nine eleven attacks the, has the air marshal stopped? Zero. Uh, mm. Maybe it seems like a waste of money. I just feel like this is like a firefighter police dilemma going on here, where it's like, why are we spending so much money on police? forces when we should probably be spending more money on firefighters and paramedics and stuff yeah well what you know, what what you know what that means is we have to start setting stuff on fire that way the government knows mm. that we need more firefighters i need a firefighting tank yeah how am i gonna <laughs> how am i gonna stop the fires if i don't have a firefighting tank <laughs> it's a great point yeah an armored personnel water <laughs> mm -hmm. well that's, that's it, it hey, folks. That's, hey, I loved it, Christian. It was a good episode, babe. A little bit of anti-capitalist twinge on it, I feel like. Maybe that was just mm. me putting it in there. Me? And people say I'm the f political one. People do say that. People do say it. They're wrong. Name your favorite politician. None. Fuck. Base. Holy fuck. None of the above. Wow. That's so fucking basic. You know true. who my favorite politician is? A dead one. Oh, which one? Oh, thank <laughs> Alexander Hamilton. He just made a really good musical. You know what I'm saying? Ew. I don't know anything about him. Is yeah, me neither, actually. He had a lot of bad, a lot of, I would say a lot more bad than good because, you know, he's a founding father, but he was actually one of the biggest pushers for the idea of like states, um, uh, like budget surplus going to other states in forms of uh, huh. welfare. Interesting. Like he was like pushing for like the cash crop states in the South with you know slavery okay. to push that money out into other states to help them develop. Okay. Uh, and Andrew Jack, not Andrew Jackson, uh, uh, Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson was like, "Fuck no, we're a bunch of slaveholders in Virginia. We don't want our money getting out of the state." Okay. So 
So Alexander Hamilton was the founder of like the National shot. Bank, a lot of that stuff. Hmm. You're telling me you threw away his shot. <laughs> Guess was what you I'm not about. telling you that. Erica, where can <laughs> all these piss babies follow us? The internet. At? Judgies Pod. J D G I E S. And where are we going P-O-D. right now? Ooh. Weekly bonus episode. Over at patreon.com slash judgies pod. There seems to be diff- can some, some confusion. I have re edited the Patreon tiers. $5 tier is a monthly bonus episode. So once a month, one of the weekly episodes will be released. It'll be the last Monday of the month every time. Okay. And Perfect. then. The ten dollar tier is you get every, you get fifty two episodes a week, I mean fifty two episodes a year, p- on top of ad free episodes that you get on the one dollar tier. Access to our Discord for the one dollar tier as well, and all that good stuff. Extra special announcements sometimes go in there. Do I tease? Do I tell my secret third story on the bonus episode? Yes. This week, it ties in to the story we just read pretty well. Freaky shit. No. no. Oh. That's why I was like, what are you talking about? That's the secret fourth story. Your airplane story? Yeah. You haven't told us. You've story. never told the airplane story? We've never told the airplane Holy story. Holy shit, folks. Head over to patreon.com slash judges pod and you get to hear the airplane story. I There's... feel like we've said no, it. Zero, you never chance. Has. Zero chance I've told I, the story. I thought you were gonna bring it up earlier when you were like, I feel like we've all and I was like, help somebody off of an airplane. And no. I was thinking about episode. that though, because like how often I've never been on a flight where somebody's come over the the yeah. thing and been like, oh, I need a doctor. Hey, yeah. I have, and if you want to hear about it, go over to the weekly bonus episode. All right, Love that. Well, I'm excited to hear this story for the seventeen thousandth time. <laughs> Whoa, that was like SFX like esque. Ah, and it's summoned a dog. Sweet girl. Have a good weekend, everybody. Bye. Pisses and kisses. The judges love you. Have a good year. Let's hope 2024 fucking rocks.